All right, watch this. Hey guys, today we're gonna show you how we wash and wax and do a full detail on our coach. Uh, it's springtime and we wanna get this done while it's cool before the hot summer heat and the sun comes and we also do it again in the winter. Now we do do intermittent quick washings, but this is where we're gonna do everything. We're on the road and we have to take opportunities to do this when they, provide, when they present themselves. Some campgrounds won't let us, some campgrounds will. But we're gonna get into all that. Details coming up on RV Street. Okay, let's get right to it. We implemented some really common sense uh, approach to how to make this coach look nice and, it, and it's protected. Our coach is eight going on nine years old and everybody that sees our coach says, wow, I thought that was brand new or maybe a year or two old. But it didn't start that way when we first got it. So we're going to go through first here the inventory of things that we're going to need. I keep all of this in one of my bays. Okay, this is everything that I need to wash and wax and polish and all that. The only thing I don't keep in my base is the ladder. This is the first thing that we're going to need. This folds down very small and I keep it in the toad. So we keep this in the back of our car with our chairs and table and stuff like that. So this takes no room at all in our bay. The next thing is, is I carry this, um, tub. This tub has all of my polishing wheels, my, my polishing um, liquids, my waxes, my compounds, my soaps, and all of my pads. This simply just picks up and it slides into the bay. I also keep my dual action Meguiar's polisher. This is a variable speed this thing here is awesome. It will take small five inch pads and it'll also take larger six inch pads. They disattach by Velcro. And like I said, it's variable speed. You're gonna need a 50 foot extension cord. The next thing is the polish. I use a ultimate polish made by Meguiar's. This stuff is just dynamite. I love this polish. And I used to use uh, Ultimate Liquid Wax. It's a pure synthetic polymer wax, but I have found something much better in the last six months, and that's Rejects. You've seen me do the, use this before when I did the, uh, the graphics, how to fix cracked graphics, remember that? Well, after I painted all those and got it fixed, I covered it with Rejects. This is uh, normally made for aircraft, but man, does it work beautiful on a coach. Two coats of this blocks 100% of UV rays, and that's what hurts these coaches. This is what, you have to protect the coach to keep it from oxidizing and getting um, uh, chalky and all those type of things. So I don't use wax anymore. I use rejects. Soap. This is the kind of soap that I use. Using the right kind of soap is important because if, if you don't use the right kind of soap, you're going to wash your coach and strip off all the wax that you've put on there in previous um, applications. I love this stuff. It takes one ounce. So I just unscrew this. I put in an ounce, ounce and a half, and fill that with warm water or hot water, even better. Shake it up and attach it to my power washer. And that brings me to the power washer. This is an electric power washer. I've had this thing for three years and I don't even think I paid a hundred bucks for this thing. But it is awesome. Uh, it's perfect for a coach. It does, this is not something that you would go and power wash your uh, driveway in. 
Uh, this is a portable, electric, small volume uh, power washer, but it, it, it's just the absolute perfect for something like this here. It comes with a two-piece wand, and you just put these two pieces together and twist them, and that makes one, uh, one wand. It comes with your electrical cord and the hose. I'll show you how all this hooks up later. It also comes with two tips. So what I do is I attach, once I have the soap and everything in the uh, cannon, I attach the soap cannon here and I spray and as you'll see, s totally saturate the uh, coach with uh, soap foam. I'll let that sit for about five, six minutes. Then I will take the white tip here and I will remove the cannon and put on the white tip and this is how I will rinse. I call this the secret sauce because when you spray that foam on there, no matter how dirty your coach is, when it sits there, it lifts all that dirt off the coach, which brings me to the brushes. I have three brushes. I have an extra coarse one that I use for the roof because we got the bird poop and all that type of stuff up there and I need something pretty abrasive. When I do the side of the coach and around the coach, I use this very, very soft bristle brush. And then I have a third one that I use and I use this for using by hand by going inside the tire uh, wheels. The last thing we're going, to eat, we're going to need is this bucket, and I have a rope, and this is how I bring up my soap to get it up on the roof to clean and wash the roof. And of course, the last thing <laughs> really is plenty of towels, uh, microfiber cloths. So that's really about it. Everything here you buy one time, except for rejects and soap. We always like to wash and wax with the slides in. It makes everything nice in a flat surface and man, it makes doing this job 10 times easier. I can do this whole entire wash and wax and detail in one day. And the other thing is always, always, always do this when you have a cloudy sky. Uh, you do not want to do this in the sun. Uh, rejects, you cannot put it in direct sun, and even if you didn't use rejects, you do not want to have water spots. Uh, water spots, once they get baked in, there's only one way to get rid of them, and that's to polish them out. All right, it's time to start washing this puppy, right? The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to get up on the roof, and I'm going to use my pole. And just one quick word about this pole, look how easy that thing is to extend and not extend. I used to use a painter's pole. What a piece of junk and a hassle that thing was. Have to unscrew it and put it out and then screw it again and it was heavier. This thing here, boom, boom. I love, this is, I told my wife when I bought this, I said, man, this thing is the most awesome pole. And then I'm gonna take my hard um, brush and the bucket of water. We're gonna get up on the roof and get going up there. Let's do it. So Martin is using the ladder to help him get up on the roof. As you can see, he's got his brush and a rope in his hand. And that rope is actually attached to a bucket and he's gonna hoist that bucket up with that rope. There he goes, just like that. He's using a rag here so he can get over the rounded lip. Now he's just using the brush. So Martin is hosing off the portion of the roof that he has just washed, and he does this in stages. So Martin is at the back of the coach now, and he's almost finished. And this is what the roof looks like when it's all clean. Okay, well, it's time to finally start washing the outside of this thing. We're done with the roof. We got everything hooked up, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. We're gonna take the soap. I love this soap, it's really thick. 
and we're going to put in about an ounce and a half okay about a shot and a half you see that there now we're going to go add some hot water okay we're getting closer so i got the wand all put together the hose goes up underneath here on one end the other end of the hose goes to here this is what powers the wand then I've got the water hose here, and it goes to the water softener. I'm gonna go turn on that water. It's gonna charge and fill the pump with water. We're gonna put the cannon on, and then we're gonna turn this baby on and watch what happens when we do that. All right, watch this. Is that not sweet? That, my friends, is how you wash a 12 and a half foot tall vehicle. That foam was going to sit there for about three, four, five minutes, and it's going to loosen up that dirt. And then I'm going to take my pole and my soft brush and brush it and if you'll notice I stopped about two-thirds of the way down the reason is is that I do it in these little sections that way I can let it sit I can brush it I can rinse it and then move on and when I get through with one side I come back and I dry it off with my towels I do never want to have water spots again so after I dry it then I'll move around to the back and then the other side and so on. All right, so now we're going to use the brush and extend that baby up, lock it into place, and let's do this. Okay, I've taken the soap cannon off and I've put in my white tip here. This has more of a wide fan and not a narrow, a narrow fan. This thing here is how I rinse it. But this is how we do it. Wash a little bit at a time, rinse, and wipe off. No water, draw, no water stains, no, none of that kind of stuff. And that's the way you keep the coach looking nice. Okay, so we're all through with this side here. It's all washed, rinsed, and dried off. And now we're moving to the back. And I wanted to make a little comment about the back. You guys know that when, especially when you're driving in the rain and you're towing your towed vehicle, this whole area back here in the car just gets nasty. In those kind of cases, this coach right now is not that dirty, but I wanted to do this video and I also wanted to put on another coat of rejects to protect it because we're starting to enter into summer and I don't want to be out here in 95 degree weather uh, doing this but when your coach is really filthy like when you drive in the rain you want to give this thing use that soap cannon and really just lay on that foam and let it sit there for about five six seven minutes and then rinse it off and that'll get 90 percent of that dirt off it'll let foam will lift it off and then apply another a second coat of foam then you can use the brush and get the final dirt off there and rinse it off. That's the way to do it when the coach gets really nasty. We started at 10 doing this video and it is now 1235. We have washed the whole coach, including the roof, dried it all off, and now we're ready to put on our Rejects final coat to protect the polish that we've got on this thing. So I keep two dedicated six inch foam 
discs here, and I've labeled them with a highlighter. One's for polish, one's for rejects. Because even though I've washed it, and you'll notice this when you wash yours too, you'll still come across some spots where you'll see some black streaking or some smudge marks or something that the soap did not get off. Not a problem. So as I'm applying rejects, if I run across a spot and I'm like, oh, look, look at that there, there's some black streaking. I'll get my polish pad out, I'll put it on the polisher, I'll get my polish, put some polish on there, work that area a minute at the most, wipe it off with a clean microcloth, I'm done. Okay, so this is a perfect example of what I was telling you, how even though we've washed this coach and it's all nice and clean, you can see we've got some of this stuff going on underneath here. All right, so we just put a little bit of uh, polish on there, rub it around. And once we've polished it, we just take our microcloth and wipe that off. Look at that. It shines just like a beautiful little baby's butt. So let's get started putting on the rejects. Remember what I said earlier, you cannot put rejects on in the direct sun. So you always want to be putting it on the shady side. Right now the sun's there. I've got about an hour before it comes over here. So I can knock out this side and then when the sun gets over here later in the afternoon, I'll do the other side, okay? So we take a six inch pad, we put that on the Velcro, we get out the rejects, and we put in about like that right there, and then we start smearing it and putting it on very lightly. You don't need to put this heavy like a turtle wax or something, I hate that stuff, but this is a thin coating, it doesn't take a lot. And as we move down the coach, the pad will get saturated with this. You'll end up using less and less because it'll be in the pad. You know, you take it and you just spin it around like that. You put it on low and let her go. That's it. Again. And you keep doing this and you want it to sit for about 15 minutes, and then you come back and wipe it off with a microcloth. And we just continue just like this, doing about two or three feet at a time, moving the ladder, starting back up, another three feet, moving the ladder, another three feet. By the time I get to that slide, it's gonna be 15, 10 or 15 minutes. Then I bring the ladder back and I wipe it off with a micro towel, Microsoft towel uh, by hand. I mean, it comes off so easy. I move to the next section. And here's a shot of the driver's side all completed. Look at that. That just looks so good. He's... This will last six months. All right, well, it is now 2.20 and we started at 10. We have it all washed. We have it all, wa um, all dried. We have rejects one whole entire side and that four and a half hours almost includes us all setting up for the cameras and everything. So uh, this would go a whole lot quicker if we weren't filming. So I'm trying to give you a sense of time on how long it takes to do each step. But we just finished the driver's side and you can see, remember my rejects pad? Well, look at it. It's starting to get uh, filled in with particles and whatever, I don't know what all that is, but I'm gonna take that off and I'm gonna start with a new pad because now we're starting on the passenger side and I wanna start with a nice new pad. So whenever you get pads, you don't buy one or two. You want to have several, okay, to do different things. So let's get started on the passenger side now. Okay, so I wanted to show you a little tip here on the back. If you look up here, we're going to do the back the same way. We're going to use our ladder and start at the crown up there and work our way down. But 
when we get to this latter part, you cannot get a polisher in behind here. So what we'll do is we'll use the assist of our ladder and we'll, and we'll climb up here. We'll apply it by hand and we'll get behind the ladder and put rejects on by hand. Once the rejects is dried again after about 15 minutes, then we'll come back with our microfiber cloth and wipe it all down. But that's just a little trick about the, the ladder. That's why I wear these sleeves right here. Because when you get in but when you get in behind the ladder, you can scrape your back of your arm on these edges and it'll cut you or scratch you. So wear a little protective clothing while going in behind these areas. Okay, another thing I want to bring to your attention now that I'm up here on the front part, this is one of the awesome uh, benefits of using rejects too because as we all know while we're traveling in the RV like in the late spring and summer and this thing is just splattered with bugs rejects you come in just with a wet a damp cloth and those bugs will come right off and, and I put it on the windshield and the front of the coach so glass and the front of your coach to get rid of bugs and repel water it's a great thing a full detail wash and wax on the motorhome also includes washing our window shades. Okay, well no wash and detailing a motorhome would be complete without us doing the tires too. What we use on our tires is Aerospace Protectant 303. This is not a petroleum base uh, tire dressing. This is actually like a suntan lotion for your tires and it protects your rubber parts. We buy it by the gallon because we can save money and then we put it in a smaller container and we keep this in the bay. We've also dedicated a rag for that and we, and we keep it in a plastic bag next to the small bottle and what Joni will do is she'll just put a couple of quick shots on that rag and wipe the tires. When I'm always putting away the equipment and stuff like that, Joni will always come and she likes doing the tires and making them look all nice and shiny. So Joni will put another uh, coating here on the rear tires. And this protects the tires, the rubber, from a destructive UV rays. But if we're parked anywhere for like four, five, six days or more, when we're done, we'll put wheel uh, tire covers on. My final icing on the cake is taking Meguiar's Ultimate Fast Finish. This is a spray on wax. I do that on all the windows, all the other windows, not the windshield. And this keeps those windows so nice and clean uh, if it rains or the campground sprinkler system comes on and it gets wet or whatever, this will prevent spots. All you need is just a little bit. You put it on. And your windows are just like glass. Well, there you have it, folks. Everything is all done detailed out nice and shiny all the carpets on the stairs are clean we pulled the uh, the coach into the spot and opened up the slides so i could go ahead and do the uh, washing um, i took a damp rag and wiped the, the ends of the slides and then rejects those also but everything looks so nice and shiny and protected and I am just so happy this is over. <laughs> um, it took one solid day starting at 10 o'clock and that is including the time to set up for all these different uh, video shots. So. If you were to start on, at, say, 9 o'clock in the morning, you could be ready and barbecuing by probably 5 o'clock, getting a nice cold beer, and uh, this will all be behind you for another six months. So, go get your coach clean. 
make that puppy shine. Now, I wanted to say, I know there's a lot of you out there that are not able to do this. You either have a health issue or you're getting old or you have arthritis, you don't feel safe getting on the roof. Uh, I, un I understand that. And uh, you just have to pay somebody to do your job for you. But most people out there are able to do this and they're looking on ways to, on how to do it themselves. So that's why I always like to do it myself. I use the right equipment. It doesn't take me long. It's a one-time purchase and all I got to do is buy more soap and more rejects. That's it. Sometimes your coach doesn't get really filthy and require a heavy washing. It just needs a light, a light wash because it's just dusty. I've got a great tip coming up in another video on how to do that kind of a washing. You can do the whole entire coach in about 30 to 40 minutes and it'll look great. So don't forget, we're gonna have links to all these products in case you just wanna make it easy, go click on it. It'll take you right where to get it. Uh, be sure to watch some of our other videos that I mentioned during here, like the safe water video and maybe even the how to fix crack graphics. This all, this all is about taking care of your coach correctly. So, if you like this video, go down there and click the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing and ringing that bell to be notified the next time I upload my next video. Uh, it's free. It's sub subscribing is free. Anyway, I hope this really answers your questions on how we wash and wax while on the road. This is RV Street. Stick around.